Here's a quick video uh, on version two of my hot air water heater. I needed to fit a pump anyway, which is what this panel is. Uh, there's literally come in there, out there, that's the temperature and that's the switch. Now the reason that I needed to fit a pump is because of the way that my van is set up, my water tanks are under all that lot in the kitchen. So what I've done is using a little T-piece thing here, I can fill the water and there's another one there which I use a slightly different pump for to empty the waste. So what it means is I don't have to empty all the stuff underneath the kitchen to uh, replenish the water. So at the moment that is a 25 litre uh, container of water. You can see its current temperature is 51.2. It started off at 13 degrees and that was about 50 minutes ago. So what's basically happening is it's coming out of there into here out of this one into there out of there and back out again so the pump is between those two so it's pumping through this and this is the little heat exchange which I will take out and show you in a minute now it's a bit messy back here but my heater is right there and I've got to do something with uh, this mess here so basically what we've got is, come on, focus. So we've got two connectors there, a little pump there. That thing whizzing round is the temperature gauge and some wiring that I need to tidy up. And as I say, I also need to redo that joint properly. So there is virtually no heat loss at all coming out so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that off so the pump is off come on refocus this thing's going to be a bit toasty in fact it's very toasty cool there we go bloody hell that's hot right uh so in there is the heat exchange and this is just sort of packed up with bits of wood and there's the heat exchange. So the hot air is coming straight out of there. And it's going straight into the heat exchange. And there's a, if I can, if I can show you this without burning my fingers. There is a slight gap between the heat exchange, so you've got that and then there's a gap. This allows the air to expand fully into the entire area and then it just comes out there. So obviously all it's doing is there's literally just coming through there. So yeah, that is it. Uh, as I say, 13 degrees to 50 degrees in 50 minutes I think that's fairly good I mean in most cases you wouldn't go with 50 degrees uh, a little bit too warm for a shower so yeah works very well so all you do is switch that on and the water starts pumping Obviously when I'm finished, what I do is I pull that one first. As you can see, there's always a little bit of a dribble. Then pull that one. And that's it. And then 
disconnect this. I uh, will warn you if you make one of these, be very careful when you disconnect this. The water inside the heat exchange is ridiculously hot. Um, so you've got to be a bit careful when you uh, empty it out. And then all I do is connect that back together. And that keeps any water that's still left in there in there. And then I've got my two hoses. So the temperature thing, because I know somebody's actually asked this, this is a thing from a um, PC. So if you're building a computer, it's actually what these um, heat exchanges are from. They're there for computer um, cooling. That is just literally a, one of them. So you buy them and they, they I think they call them three-way temperature probe things or something weird. Uh, the the only thing is they are five volts. Don't know whether you're going to be able to see this. That thing there on the back, that's a little what they call a buck converter. So that's taking in the 12 volts and taking it down to five volts. Uh, what these things run on. And there you go. Quite happy with that. It's a lot better than my first design. My first design was, um, let's just say, somewhat overcomplicated. But then I've never done anything first time that wasn't over engineered or overcomplicated. So there you go. I can tell you it works really well. Thanks very much. Here is a photo of the buck verter that I talked about. They're known as mini DC to DC, uh, normally sort of 12 to 20 volts down to five, although they're not actually just five. If you look at the top picture, you can see on the back of them, there are little solder pads that you use to jump across uh, to set a given voltage. They also do have a potentiometer at the front where you can adjust the voltage, but I normally, to be honest with you, cut that off and then solder at the back the exact voltage that I want.